there aren't very hard numbers regarding instances of androgen deficiency amongst young adolescents. And even when there are hard numbers, the percentages are quite low. So I find it very, very surprising that so many young people out there are now on TRT. Vigor Steve here. We have a huge epidemic in our fitness industry. It seems that nowadays everybody, including their mother, is on testosterone replacement therapy, including the kids, the young adolescents aged 16 to 20 years old or 20 to 25 years old. I don't think that it's necessary at all. I mean, I started my first cycle when I was 26 years old. And even that you could say is a little bit on the young side, but I did my blood work annually and my testosterone levels were declining. But still, I ended up at 600 nanograms per deciliter, which is flat in the middle of the reference range for adults. And I didn't say I went on TRT. I just did a steroid cycle because I wanted to see what the fuss was all about after 10 to 11 years of natural bodybuilding. But nowadays, people sign up for a TRT clinic before they go to the gym. And I think that's a huge epidemic in our fitness industry. So let's discuss that in this video. Before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Stay tuned for the weekly Vigorous Q&A. That's always on Saturday. So if you want to ask me some questions, and get some personalized advice, I'll see you there over the weekend. Now, first things first, why are so many kids on TRT nowadays? I think one part of that is because they get influenced by Instagram and social media in general. A lot of guys that are younger age, maybe 18 to 24 year olds, are now already competing. They're making money off social media. They're clearly on performance enhancing drugs, even though some of them claim to be natural, but it's very obvious to an experienced guy like me and many experienced guys like yourself, that they're using PEDs, especially steroids. So there's social pressure there, right? A lot of kids are like, okay, my hero is on performance enhancing drugs. I'm not exactly sure what he's taking. There's so much information on the internet nowadays, including on this YouTube channel about how to take PEDs safely. I feel ready, I wanna be like him, right? Or I wanna be like her, but that's the wrong approach because you're not doing exactly what this person is doing that you're idolizing, right? You're not doing their training, their diet their supplementation or their performance enhancing drug protocol because they're not disclosing it or claiming to be natural. So you're a little bit lost in the woods in that sense. So maybe some of these guys that get inspired, they start with pro hormones or SARMs. They don't know what they're doing. They run a SARM only cycle or a pro hormone only cycle or an oral steroid only cycle. Oh, guys, don't get me started. And they don't know anything about post-cycle therapy or keeping their testosterone levels in range or taking exogenous testosterone because they're not ready to pin. So it's a cluster of mismanagement, steroid mismanagement or performance enhancing drugs mismanagement. And they go androgen deficient after their cycle because, well, HPTA is now suppressed and they don't know anything about PCT properly. I have a separate video about that, by the way. I'll link it at the end of this one. So... They get themselves into an androgen deficient state. They don't know what to do. They feel horrible. They have erectile dysfunction, poor libido, low self-esteem because, well, they're still kids, right? And now their entire self-esteem was built on the little physique that they were able to build that is now slowly deteriorating. They're not confident with girls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They go to the clinic. And since there's now so many testosterone replacement clinics out there nowadays that are ready to prescribe, they're on TRT for life. And I don't think that's necessary at all. Now, on the other side of that, there's a lot of young kids and young adolescents out there who simply don't take good care of themselves. And they might still be in the fitness industry going to the gym and doing some sort of a physical lifestyle, but their diet isn't on point, their nutrition isn't on point, their health supplementation isn't on point, they're neglecting all the micronutrients that are required for normal testosterone function because a lot of those are coming from food and well, they're getting their food from uh, fast food services or, you know, grab deliveries or, or, you know, plastic bags at the grocery store, which is certainly not healthy to do at a young age, especially while you're undergoing puberty and your entire body is developing and requires all these nutrients for your body to develop into an adult, right? They're not taking good care of themselves. They're playing video games until late at night and they're not sleeping according to their circadian rhythm. They go out drinking, they go out partying, and now they have subclinical testosterone levels through their own doing by treating their body like a dumpster. So on one side, you have the social media pressure, and then on the other side, probably an even bigger side of this entire debacle is treating your body as a dumpster. And then there's a very small percentage who actually need TRT medically. 
But as you'll see from the data, which we're going to discuss a little bit later on in this video, that's only a very small percentage. Still, people use those small percentages as a crutch to get TRT prescribed. So let's go over the data. Let's look at the total testosterone concentrations for men. And I'll put it on the screen right here. I'm not going to discuss all of the reference ranges, just the ones that are relevant for this video. So if you're, let's say, 15 to 16 years old, your total testosterone levels are going to be between 100 to 1200 nanograms per deciliter. When you're 17 to 18 years old, it's a little bit higher at the bottom end, 300 to 1200 nanograms per deciliter. And adults over 19 years old, 240 to 950 nanograms per deciliter, even though in some clinical reference ranges, the, the top end might be 1000 or 1100 nanograms per deciliter, and other sites, maybe in Asia or other parts of the world, 871 nanograms per deciliter, which I always see on my blood work results here in Thailand. So even then, Right, when I was 26 years old, and with 600 nanograms per deciliter, which were declining in a stressful environment, not taking perfect care of myself, and even though I was bodybuilding and following a healthy lifestyle, not drinking so much, not so much partying recreational drugs, even though I dabbled here and there, still 600 nanograms per deciliter. If I lived the absolute fitness lifestyle, I'm 100% convinced I would be able to get myself up to 700, 800, maybe even 900 nanograms per deciliter, especially considering all of the testosterone boosting supplements and practices that are out there nowadays. So these are the reference ranges for, um, let's say, young adults, but I couldn't find the total testosterone concentrations by age group for men who are over 19 years old, specified in, let's say, five-year increments. So this is what we have to work with. Now, that being said, androgen deficiency, when it's clinically recognized, for men that are children or pre-puberty levels, that's below 30 nanograms per deciliter. So that's um, quite towards the bottom of the reference range when you look at the total testosterone concentrations from boys age 14 to 18, for example. And in adults, it's below 300 nanograms per deciliter. So that's still between 240 to 300 nanograms per deciliter, let's say, towards the bottom of the reference range. Now, how often do I see that in teens? Wanting to start their first cycle, never. I never see it, honestly. I never see it. Most teens that are ready to start their first cycle, they're over 300 nanograms per deciliter, maybe 400, 500, sometimes even 1100 nanograms per deciliter. I've seen 1500 nanograms per deciliter on boys that are like 15 to 18 years old because their parents make them do blood work. Their parents are bodybuilders themselves. They want to run their training protocol and their diet past me. They do their blood work extensively. That's like 50 or 70 markers that they send over to me so I can help them interpret the blood work results of their children. And most of them are very high on the testosterone level. So I rarely see it that young teenagers or adolescents actually require testosterone replacement therapy medically. So that's not meaning that there aren't cases out there, but I feel that most cases are kind of self-induced, right? Through social media pressure and then going on a SARM-only cycle or an oral-only cycle and not doing PCT correctly or just treating your body very poorly. When you look at the reference ranges for free testosterone levels, you see that levels kind of peak around 18 years old and then slowly start to decline. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact SHBG levels by age group because those are also currently unknown. So we just have to go with free testosterone levels they start to peak around 18 years old and then slowly start to decline, similar to how total testosterone levels are starting to decline. And when you see in cases of androgen deficiency, for children or pre-puberty ages or young adolescents, it wasn't really determined. But for adults, androgen deficiency regarding free testosterone levels is below 50 picograms per milliliter or 5 nanograms per deciliter. So that might mean that you're below the reference range for age. 18, 19, and 20 to 25 years old, but you might be creeping towards the middle of the reference range as you get older. So if you're, let's say, 90 to 95 years old, five nanograms per deciliter is in the middle of the reference range for your respective age group. So keep that in mind. Again, it hasn't really been fully determined per age group. We're just going to have to work with the numbers that were given from the medical community. Now, regarding bioavailable testosterone levels, I'll put that on the screen as well, but that hasn't been um, investigated regarding androgen deficiency. I wasn't able to find that. Neither for serum DHT levels and SHBG levels for that matter. So let's just go over the evidence that we have regarding the percentage of androgen deficiency 
in adults as well as young adults or even children. Now, when you look at the data from the Andrican Society, it only goes from 30 years and older. So when you look at ages 30 to 39, there's a 2 to 6% chance that you're androgen deficient, which means that your total testosterone levels are below 300 nanograms per deciliter and free testosterone levels are below 50 picograms per milliliter or 5 nanograms per deciliter towards the bottom of the respective reference ranges. As you get older, these percentages goes up. I'll put it on screen so you can follow along. But this is just an average based on several different studies because there's many different studies that have been performed in cases of androgen deficiency. So a study from 2007 by Arujo et al. shows different numbers. The prevalence of androgen deficiency in ages from 30 to 39 is 2.1%. So there's not exactly a range. There's a clear hard number. And these levels go up as ages go up as well. Now, this might not exactly jive with the percentages that we got from the Andrican Society, but there's two more studies that have determined this. 2010 study from Tajar et al. shows that ages 40 to 49 have a 6% chance of androgen deficiency. Wu et al. from 2010 show ages 45 to 54 with a 5.5% uh, chance of androgen deficiency. So even though these are considered to be later on in life, not exactly young adolescents, or early 20 year olds, even then the instances of androgen deficiency are actually quite low. So I also did a lot of research regarding a percentage of androgen deficiency in adolescents. I'll put this on the screen because there's a lot more text because depending on the age groups that we have for total testosterone levels, I did additional research. So you see that in most age groups that are very, very young, androgen deficiency is only present in special and particular medical conditions. So age zero to five months, for example, when there's congenital adrenal hyperplasia present or androgen insensitivity syndrome, then there might be androgen deficiency uh, resulting in you know, conditions regarding the genitalia and other physical abnormalities. So let's just focus on age 15 to 18. Boys of these age groups have testosterone levels within normal ranges, but androgen deficiency can occur due to conditions like Klinefelter syndrome, testicular injury, or certain medications. Now, the list of medications which can lower testosterone levels is extensive. Off the top of my head, beta blockers, SSRIs, um, corticosteroids, obviously. So let's say you have an inflammatory condition, you might be prescribed corticosteroids right, to bring that inflammation down. Several uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are able to lower testosterone concentrations, perhaps inducing androgen deficiency. And there aren't very hard numbers regarding instances of androgen deficiency amongst young adolescents. And even when there are hard numbers, the percentages are quite low. So I find it very, very surprising that so many young people out there are now on TRT. And honestly, I do get it, right? The social media pressure is vast, especially when you're young, the insecurity, you wanting to reach certain goals, you, you look up to your social media heroes and you want to be like them. And then it's very easy nowadays with YouTube education or education behind uh, membership sites to, uh, you know, start dabbling with PEDs. And of course, nowadays on Instagram, right, a lot of people don't really want to be known as a fake natty. So they claim TRT, which, you know, from a legal perspective, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Maybe you're dabbling a little bit with real performance enhancing drugs. So besides testosterone, you're running Primo and Anivar and GH and whatever else, right? You're, you're trying to build your physique with performance enhancing drugs, but you don't really want to talk about PEDs because let's be honest, you probably don't know how to explain it that well because you're young and you don't want any of your young audience to copy what you're doing, causing them to be androgen deficient because they want to be like you and now they start dabbling without the knowledge that you have that is also probably <laughs> very limited. There's a huge learning curve for you to get your hands dirty. I made a very... Uh, I thought it was a very good video about, you know, when you're ready for your first cycle. I'll link it at the end of this one. I'll put a checklist on the screen right now so you know exactly when you're ready for your first cycle and, you know, what length of things you need to undergo before you can even start injecting stuff. And let's be honest, most of you guys probably only need half, if not even less, of the checks that I put on this list. Let me know down below if you met all of the checks or how many checks of these you met when you start dabbling with PEDs. There's a lot of learning involved, 
before you start taking performance enhancing drugs. And even then, when you do it correctly, you do your pulse cycle therapy, you come off cycle, your testosterone levels will bounce back with time. It doesn't happen in a week or two. It might happen over a month or three. You just have to be patient. And again, if you start shutting down your HPTA at that of an early age, which I think is insane, but people are still going to do it. So might as well teach you how to do that safely. If you're going to be that stupid, only do it for a certain amount of time. So your endogenous testosterone production and estradiol production and DHA sulfate and everything else in between and above and below all the metabolites can restore itself for the time that you're off cycle. Don't shut yourself down indefinitely because then you're certainly on TRT for life because you didn't even give your body a chance to reach full maturity by finishing a full puberty cycle. Man, I, I, I still don't understand how people can be so stupid, but you know, there, there's plenty of guys out there, right? Let me emphasize it again. Finish your puberty first, then build your freaking foundation, right? Learn how to love how to train hard, learn how to love how to do your nutrition correctly, learn how to love how to do research because you need to be able to do research upon research upon research before you should start dabbling with performance enhancing drugs. And the first thing you can learn is which over-the-counter supplements you can take to boost your testosterone levels. Man, it's not rocket science to me. So that's what I did when I was younger. And nowadays there's so much more to learn and so much more avenues you can explore to learn about these kinds of things. So just explore them all. For the love of God, guys, think ahead. Your life is probably going to be another couple of decades long. And don't do anything drastic right now because you're misbehaving, treating your body badly, or you want to look like your favorite social media celebrity. Because, well, if you start doing it wrong at an early age, at later stages in life, you're certainly going to regret it. You're going to look back on that moment and think to yourself, man, I was such an idiot. And now I have to pay and suffer with these decisions that I made when I was still very, very young, and I was just doing stuff haphazardly. Again, if you're treating your body badly already, and this is the reason why your total testosterone levels are low and you're androgen deficient, guess what? You're going to dabble. You don't have respect for your body because you never built that up for yourself. You don't know how to take care of yourself. And you're going to be one of those guys that ends their uh, life prematurely because you're overdoing stuff. You're reckless. Right? And we see it happen over and over again in the fitness industry nowadays. How many guys in their 20s or early 30s are dying because they're on performance enhancing drugs and overdoing it? Guys, you don't need TRT. You just need to take care of yourself. Respect yourself. Love yourself. Treat your body the best you can because that's the only thing you own. So why spend all of your money and your effort somewhere else chasing girls, um, you know, doing dangerous stuff? with um, the partying and et cetera, right? All the stupid stuff that teenagers do. Treat this first, right? Love yourself first. And when you love yourself first, your testosterone levels are going to go up. I promise you, unless you have a medical condition and then unfortunately I'll have to take that promise back, right? The body's a little bit more complicated than that. But <laughs> really, man, if you treat your body with the utmost respect, your testicles are going to thank you for it and it's going to reward you with a ton of testosterone. And I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry for the very long rant at the end, but man, if a guy like me that doesn't even know you is looking out for your health more than you are looking out for your own health, then you know it's bad. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. All of my sponsors and affiliates are right there. And if they're not there, head over to my website, vigorsteve.com. There might be a couple there more waiting for you. If you're looking for personalized advice, you need some help interpreting your blood work because you think you're qualified for TRT, but you don't really want to go with TRT after watching this video, head over to my website. You can find the rates for consultations right there. I'm always available for consultations. Just contact me directly and we'll set it up. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A frontable bicep for you guys. Remember when you see this, this took 25 years to acquire. So don't do anything haphazardly to get something like this. I made plenty of mistakes and I'm making these YouTube videos so you guys don't have to. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.